What's up everyone? Let's do the first sorting question here. Balanced split. It's always good to learn about sorting algorithms and how they can be used to uh, solve problems and speed up uh, speed up algorithms as well. So in this case we're uh, given a set of integers or an array of integers which may include repeated integers and we have to determine if there's a way to split the array into two subsequences A and B such that the sum of the integers in both arrays is the same and all of the integers in A are strictly smaller than all of the integers in B. Okay, so let's look at the example. So if we have 1, 5, 7, and 1, it's possible to split it up into 1, 1, 5, and 7. And here, notice that this sums up to this, and everything in A is strictly smaller than everything in B. So in this case, it's true. Here, they provide an example where it is false. So our task here is to come up with a function that can tell you whether or not it's possible to do this with a given list. All right, so first of all, I'm going to, well, I'm gonna sort the array in place here. So array.sort. Okay, and then let's follow along with our example here. So initially we have, uh, this is gonna be the array, right? And then after we sort it, it's gonna be one, one, five, seven. And now that we sorted it, we can more easily see how to solve the problem, right? So we're looking for a particular element such that, you know, everything to the left here adds up to everything on the right. All right, so 2 does not equal 12 here, so it's not going to be this one. Uh, but if we look at this one, we see that 7 does indeed equal 7, and phi, everything to the left here is less than everything to the, to the right because we sorted it. So at this point, we could look for that element just through brute force, uh, but that's probably going to be an O of n squared solution, right? Because you got to sum this and then sum that and then sum this and then sum that. So you got to do a lot of summing, uh, which is actually a bit un unnecessary. So a way to get around that and to avoid the n squared complexity is to do a cumulative sum. Um, so first of all, I'm going to create a new array, which is a copy of this one. So let's do array cumulative sum equals array dot copy okay and now i'm actually going to do the cumulative sum so for i in range one length of array cumulative sum um so to do it we just do we just add on the last element right array minus one okay so at this point the cumulative sum array is going to look it should look like this. So, okay, the first one is one, then we have two, and then, and then the third element is the sum of the first three, which is gonna be seven. And then the fourth one is gonna be the sum of the first four, which is 14, right? So here, how can we use this to, to find an element such that everything to the left adds up to everything on the right? Uh, well, the trick is to notice that um, you can, if you can find one that's equal to half of the total, right, which is going to be the, the last one, then you found um, a split, right? So we're going to look for that split. So for i in range uh, length of the array minus 1, if some condition will return true, otherwise we'll return false. Okay, so now what's the condition? We want to check, as I said, that uh, the cumulative array at i times 2 equals the sum of all the elements in the array, which is just, which is just the element at the end of our cumulative array. All right, it's 14 here which is the sum of all of these. And we also want everything to the left to be strictly less than everything to the right. 
right? So if we had, let's say, a five here, um, we could not, even if this sums to this, this would not be allowed because uh, things aren't strictly less here than here. Right? Five is equal to five, it's not less than five. So we have to, another check here. So the other check is, um, I wanna make sure that that is not equal to, to that, right? If it is, then, then we can split our array into two arrays that sum to the same thing, but uh, but one thing is not going to be, uh, but they're not going to be, you know, strictly less than. Let me say that again. The elements in A are not going to be strictly less than B, right? Even if they, even if the elements in A sum to the elements in B. And I'm missing an and here. Okay, so I think if we run this, it should pass our test cases. And indeed it does. So here, the key is to find a solution um, that does not do it in, you know, in n squared, but instead, well, this is O of, this is n log n, sorting is n log n, but then these loops here are just O of n, right? We're just looping over the, the array of size n. So the time complexity is n log n, and the space complexity is O of n, I guess, because we created a new array here. Uh, but at least we avoided the n squared complexity. So I hope that makes some sense. Thanks very much uh, for watching.